Hello everybody! Welcome to a brand new Europa Universalis 4 multiplayer campaign featuring myself, Northern Line, as well as Mathis and Arumba. Say hello! Hello! Hello there! It's been a while, and... In, well, in <laughs> so some, we'd have you believe. In some ways it's been a while. In some ways, it's been 45 seconds since our last desync and crack at this first <laughs> episode. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> fresh off that uh, Game of Thrones series, we're back. And uh, we're playing Europa Universalis 4, mostly for stability issues, but also because it's a great game. And rather than playing as the EU4 darlings, you know, over here in the invisible fog of war, France, England, Castile, Portugal, the Ottomans, Muscovy, etc., etc., we're playing as um, some little played or lesser played Eastern nations. So I'm going to be playing as the Uzbeks here, uh, a horde that borders what will eventually be either a large Muscovy or a large Russia. Who are you playing as, Arumba? Um, I'm down in the southern tip of um, India. I'm playing as Vijayanagar, something like that. That's a very yeah, diplomatic had a, pronunciation. Yeah, you had a, a better way of pronouncing it, I think. Well, because, I didn't. Uh, I didn't mean to be culturally insensitive, but I thought it might have actually just been Vijayanagar. <laughs> kind of should that. be. Kind of rolls because off the tongue a little better. What was that about zooming in and seeing a particular nation or a particular uh, county or whatever it it's was? It's true. If you lion strat, which in EU four means zoom in, zoom out. And you look right at <laughs> Vagina Gar as the big picture, but then you look a little closer. Oh my god! There's a Mysore. Mysore. <laughs> Maybe it's Misery. M mis exactly. Misery? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, what's your, your aim until we Bas end up fighting each other at some point, maybe? Yeah, I think um, I've I've never actually played as as Vijayanagar before, but I understand they're probably pretty pretty solid, pretty safe in India, and I'm gonna just try to unite India, and then prevent any of the trade from flowing to Portugal and those other filthy Spanish people. And then you know, when, it's our trade. When Wealth of Nations comes out, then you can play as England and just exploit the country that you're playing as right now. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Anyway, Mathis, how about you? I am playing as Korea. Mm. My uh, overall goal is to not get crushed by Ming or Manchu right at the bat, right off the bat. So we'll see how that goes. So what I'm thinking is that theoretically, at least if if like I survive and Arumba is able to form India or the the Mughal Empire, I can't remember which one actually is the decision. It's a uh, it's actually called Hindustan. Oh, Hindustan. Okay, right. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you and I and Mathis, if he grows or somehow takes control of like Manchu or Ming. Uh, we have a pretty easy pickings on these, like, hordes in kind of central Europe. But we'll see if we ever end up getting in combat ourselves. I'm a little bit wary about myself because I have, like, all this overextension to start with and the Timurids and then Muscovy, but we'll see. We yeah, I don't have yeah. any overextension, so... I only have one province that... I don't understand why I have land that's not cored, but I have one. I have 92% overextension to start with. Nice. That I'm sucks. at twelve percent. But that's like you yeah. from the Brittany part of the mini campaign. So I'll I'll try to do what you did. <laughs> hey Mathis, here's an interesting anecdote you've yeah. never heard before. Mm. You know the southeasternmost province in Korea. Oh oh boy, I'm ready to learn. Gyeongsang, that's where I lived when I taught in Korea. I lived in that oh, wow. province. I'm excited. There you go. I can't believe that it's the first time you've heard that. I've never heard that before. Shall we? Now here's here's the thing. Are we going to hear it again? Let's I find out. God damn, hope not. <laughs> Let's see. This is a uh, take two. Yes. Shall we begin? Oh, it's going. All right. It's All right. going. It's going. Oh, thank God. Please keep working. We... I know. <laughs> please, please keep going. I can't. <laughs> I can't move my troops. Why not? Oh, that's the same province. Disregard. <laughs> it was just a really <laughs> big panic. 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 <laughs> it was just a really big province. Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh God. How do you play this game? I forget. <laughs> so you've been playing a lot of CK two. You said. Yes, yes, lots of CK2, and then when you dive back into E4, and then the other thing is I've been playing, been playing lots of solo play, you know? Ah. And, and the trade, or sorry, the uh, the gameplay is totally different when you can't pause the game mm. every time you want to, like, move troops or do that kind of thing, you know? So it's tough. It's tough playing with you guys. But it's worth it. I, I hope so, yeah. Um, man. Uzbek does not start in a good spot. I'm going to tell you an interesting story. There was an EU4 event in uh, Stockholm last year where they showed off like the multiplayer land functionality of the game. And Johan Andersen, the, I think he's the studio manager for Paradox now. At the time, I think he was maybe the... No, he wasn't the project lead. I think he was still the studio manager. He played Uzbek and just stomped everybody. Like, d despite the weekend start, he like stomped the Timurids, stopped the Ottomans from expanding, stomped me as the Mamluks. And it, <laughs> it was... And then, like, the next time he talked, he's like, 
The Uzbeks have been nerfed in the most recent patch. I'm like, okay. <laughs> After you exploit them, of course. Yeah. Anyway. Well, so that's, that's like... what you're going to do, right? Well, I hope so. I've already got like a little bit of a, a civil war here, which is a good start. I, uh, I'm already well on my way to an alliance with Ming, so that's good. That is great news, Mattis. I'm very glad to hear that. Me too. Hmm. What do you guys think about culture conversion? That's something you think you should spend time on, or...? I rarely do it unless I have like a ton, ton of Diplo points or I uh, have a uh, uh, mission to do it. Apart from that, I don't really do it. What do you get like better, like less revolt risk? Do you get better tax income? Yeah, it increases your manpower and your taxation. Mm. And there's less revolt risk. Yep. Okay. <sighs> All right. Well, oh, I'm going to. That was fast. Yeah, huh? Oh, well, Jesus. Oh, you got an alert? Yeah. yeah. You... Declaring oh, war. You can't do that shit I in my backyard Manchu without me knowing. War upon their new enemy, the Mongol Khanate. Okay. Mongol Khanate. Hmm. Yep, I already had a CB. I, I have two provinces that I have cores on in my next on my next door neighbors, so I might as well do a re reclamation war. I usually find I don't like to to hire advisors right at the start because yeah. there's so much to do. But I don't know. I, I want you to know I'm really resisting the urge to make a reference to Smash Mouth's Smash Hit All Star right now. Oh God, <laughs> this is not Why? the NLSS, sir. I, it's hard for me to get out of that mindset. Okay. <laughs> Apparently. Anyway, Where I just gained is, like a hundred diplomatic power for just doing two marriages and two royal marriages with my neighbors. Pretty nice. I like those little bonus missions. Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. No, I'm trying I mean, to score myself a an alliance with Muscovy, but I don't think it's gonna work because we're different religions. Yeah, what are they Orthodox? I, I think. Uh, yeah, they start as Orthodox for sure. So I have I'm to ally like. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. there we go. Um, no guy conquest of Uzbek. Wonderful. All right. Good luck. They have. It's better. It's better than you saying. Oh, all right. Desync. So. Ah, true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do have a pretty good military leader. Which what I is he? He's uh he's got like two or three in the in fire and shock, but then he has four in maneuver, which is kind of all right. I feel. You know, before in the first first version of this this campaign that we started, I rolled a one three, which is very very good for a first commander, mm -hmm. off no army tradition. You know, yeah. and this time I have a three one, which is pretty much garbage because the fire value is so useless in the beginning. What did I roll? I forget. Uh, let's find out. There he is. Mine's I did a, get lucky though. Just breached the wall. Four. I got a two zero. Ooh. A two zero That's, four. <laughs> you should you should just re-roll. I mean this miss get another one? Yeah, if you look at it, like press F one and then zero and then go to so you're on the military tab. Yeah. You see those those numbers. It says like point two five, point five. Yep. So you got the fire column. So yep. only your foot soldiers, only your infantry will actually have fire values. Because everything else is multiplied by zero. As you know, zero times anything is zero. Yeah. Um, so you get 25% of their normal Damn. damage. Oh, so there we any, go. I re-rolled. Got rid of them. Yeah, any fire value is pretty much useless. I got a 1-2. I'll take it. See, a 1-2. It's better than my 3-1. Thinking of uh, getting ready to attack Japan. I think Japan's going to be my easiest target early on. Do you start with boats? Yep. Oh, wow. 17 Ooh. of them. Wow. That's a lot. I only have seven. Yep, so that's where I'm going to be going. I think Japan's going to be my early target. I have zero, um, which makes <laughs> you're, sense. You're in, yeah. <laughs> I, I the... really want to get naval supremacy on the Aral Sea, and then this this lake that's so small that they didn't even name it in the game. Oh, wait, no. It's got Lake Balchazi, but it's like the smallest font, and it's on like the easternmost basin of the lake. It's like size 2 font. I, I, I wish I could actually see. I could. I mean, if I could see you guys, that'd be nice. I, for some reason, my technology group, I can't even see you. That is weird and unfortunate for viewers as well. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. But just fortunately, see we, India. as everyone knows, everyone knows where Uzbek is. I mean, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so just imagine it in their mind's eye. <laughs> no problem. Well, if you can see the Timurids, then I'm directly north of them. Yep, I can see the Timurids, and then I can also see part of Chagatai. Ah, and I am directly so north of them. So you're north of both of them, like, yeah. kind of in between? Yeah. Okay. I, I, oh, you're, I, I actually can't see you, Ryan. 
Well, that's good because I'm doing some very clandestine stuff over here. I can only watch nice. a Roomba. <laughs> you know what so are you a war yet, Mathis? Huh? Are you a war yet? Nope, not yet. I'm waiting for my alliance with Ming to go through. Why are you slacking? Because I don't have a Costas belly on Japan. Well, can you even, can you that's fabricate no one? Excuse. Just declare a war. So. No, no, a no CB declare. That's fine. Yeah, just like, do you need a min power? You're not at ninety two percent overextension, so you should be fine. It's true. Oh geez, going back to EU four after playing CK two and never knowing if you're going to cross a river. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, which province do I have to come in from to avoid a river? You know what? I like it. I'm happy to be back after the technical issues that we've had. Not to say that we're not going to have technical issues still, but... True, I, yeah. I kind of feel good to just be playing real-world countries again. <laughs> yeah, that too. Game of and Thrones it's the, lost the, the anchor world. for me. Mm -hmm. But um, So I assume if I attack one of these uh, areas of Japan, all of Japan's going to attack me, I assume. That's how that's going to Yeah, happen. like if you attack one of the lesser Daimos, then I think Japan... We'll defend Japan you. has eight, oh. nine, ten. They have twelve thousand men. Isn't it? It's like kind of like a mini, a mini Holy Roman Empire. Isn't I it? have no idea how it works. Yeah, I've never played as uh, Japan actually. The two one three leader. How do you check tech group again? Or not tech group? Sorry, um, like military tech level. It's from the diplomacy menu. It's right on any province in that country. Okay. You can see it. Uh, so in the bottom left corner, you'll have like a. They're, you know, right next to their opinion, it'll show you military level. I'm looking. Give me a second. Yes. Okay. So they have military level three. Most people start off at three. And I... I am at two. I also start off at three. I think I'm going to be able to win this war, to be honest with you. Well, that's good. And I don't think it's going to be that difficult either, which is also good. My man, um, not my manpower, what is it called? Um, uh, force limit. Yeah, my force yeah. limit's only 11, that's where I'm up at right now. I don't know if I want to hire more, I probably should. Because, again, Japan has what? They have a total of, oh, they have even more now, 8, 9, 10. They have 13,000 men, ugh. 11 force limit is super low, too. Yeah, I need to up that somehow. Just to refresh my memory, what do you need admin points for beyond uh, beyond coring and beyond teching? Stability. Okay, right. Um, building certain items, like oh, most buildings. True. Yeah. Like temples, it's a big cost. Fair and I um, think that's about it, really. Hmm. Here we go. This is the battle that's going to determine whether or not I actually be able to progress in this multiplayer mode. <laughs> the first, the first video is always a bit of a crapshoot for me. Oh, yeah, suck on that, no guy. If I ask for military access, will that make them more positive towards me, or will it just not affect it at all? It does slightly. Thanks. I think it's like ten opinion. All right, give it to me. It's also you can give them military access and they'll become. More it actually positive. won't let me. They says they won't accept it uh, for strategic, strategic interests. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, well, what? I, I, I love that about you. when you try to give them military access, and they're like, yeah. no, strategic reasons. <laughs> Which is actually, there is a good strategic reason to not take military access, because it counts as a diplomatic action, but it should say maybe something different, because it makes it seem like it would be unstrategic to have access to your land. Right? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Which is kind of silly. Manchu has no infantry or cavalry right now? How is that even possible? Show army, show army, there we go. Aruma, in your opinion, do you think there should be like, or do you think it should automatically uh, reorganize regiments? You mean the, the button that you can press? Yeah, the button that has you go in like, like pushing things together. To merge selected units, like to consolidate regiments? Yeah, that's the one. Um, automatically, no, because Technically, a, a wider army can flank better. Oh, There's I did certain, not know that, actually. Like, early on in the game, most units just attack the unit directly in front of them. But as as you get further and further into the game, um, especially units like cavalry, as you've probably seen, they can flank up to, like, three 
if you're looking at a battle, they can flank like three units away. So, you know, you kind of it's there's a lot. There's really a lot involved in combat. In I never game. see that, which might not surprise you. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. No, I, I just recently getting, learned about tech levels, man. You got to give me some time here. I'm going to risk going offline because uh, I'm getting messaged by people. Mm. <laughs> it's like the oh, one time. Boy. Well, we're, don't, we're 16 minutes in, so yeah. it's all right. Don't don't desync. Stop messaging me. <laughs> I'm trying to play you for. <laughs> it's like the only time I ever go online, and I can see why people would try to message me. But so right now, I have the option to promote Neo Confucianism. Yes. Which will allow tolerance of heretics by plus two, or I can denounce Neo Confucianism, which will increase my national revolt risk by one, but give me missionary strength of 0.5 and a yearly legitimacy of one. Wow, that's a lot of legitimacy. How's how's your legitimacy? Uh, I don't even know. Should be the top. Yeah, I'm looking. Lim legitimacy is 100 right now. So you don't really care then? No. Mm. What about, um, do you have a lot of land that needs to be converted? I don't think so. Let me check. Uh, not even over a little bit. So <laughs> there's really no point <laughs> <laughs> to having it then. So I should probably promote Neo-Confucianism. Tolerance yeah. of heretics. Why not? Sure. I have to lose five procedure, five legitimacy right now. God damn it. Ah, uh, five legitimacy, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right. Hmm. Neo-Confucianism. Supply limit. Apologies for the motorcycles outside, by the way. It's got some cool dudes it's, riding by. You know, weather's nice. It's going to happen more often. Yep. Yay, I have an alliance. Who's your alliance with Mathis? Ming. Pretty good. I think so. The Timurids won't ally me because they have a rivalry attitude. Really? Yeah, I'm having ah. a real problem scoring like basically any alliances at all. Well, I have my first claim. Well, once we discover you, we can actually send you money. And you know, something I've started to do a lot more in EU4 is war subsidies oh, and that sucks. forcing peace. Ryan got what? war declared on him. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't get an alert about that because I haven't was, discovered um, it yet. It was the Oirat horde this time. Well, the hordes are supposed to, like, constantly be at war and conquer each other, but I don't think they're going to, like, completely swallow you up. Can you become a friend with the Timurids, or did they rival you? No, they rivaled me. I might be... No, I can't become a friend of uh, Shagatai either. Um, I was actually You're probably hoping... going to have to go... Oh, yeah. Go for like Kara Kuya Kuyun Lu, mm. like yeah. one of the people that pick pick whoever the Timurids. Yeah, they have Kara Kuy Kuyun Lu as an enemy, so you you try to partner up with them or the Mamluks. Might be able to snag the Mamluks, but distance between borders penalty is really high for both of them. As long as you share a common enemy, they should be willing to become friends. All right, I'll I'll try Kara Kuyun Lu. It's good good exactly. pronunciation going on over there. I'm trying. You guys like, impressed me. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, no matter how hard we try, it's still wrong. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> so at, at least we are putting in an effort, though. We're not just being like, ah, I'm not even going to give this a shot. Yeah. Normally, when I'm playing on my own, I'll just think, oh, yeah, that K Q guy. Yeah. <laughs> Take the first letter. That's all I need to think about. That's all you need. Yeah. Mattis, you declared war on Manchu. Yep. They had four four thousand men, so. Oh, okay. I I decided because they just went. They were just at war, and I think they lost with the Mongol Khanate. Mm. Well, that's and crazy. I, I took a. Uh, I took a mission to take one of their uh, their counties there. So. The Mongol Khanate is like a vassal of the people attacking me right now. <laughs> I thought they would be garbage. But you would think maybe not. So it's interesting to me that Ming didn't have you set to uh, as a rival at the beginning of the game. Yeah. They normally, don't they try to eat Korea? I don't know, but I immediately entered a royal marriage with them and sent over someone to improve our relations, so. Mm -hmm. Well, it used to be that they, you know, the AI would determine its alliances and all that stuff at the beginning, but then they made it so that it was already predetermined upon loading the game so mm -hmm. that you didn't, like, do that turn one, day one, send an alliance request, and then, oh, I'm actually your rival. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Makes but, sense. I don't know. I don't know what the chances are of them being friendly, but apparently you got lucky. I lucked out. Well, I'm we started like, at positive 25 opinion when I when the game started, so. 
Unlike Mathis, or Northern Lion, who didn't get lucky. Yeah. I've, I've gotten unlucky, but I've, I've been having an okay time with it nonetheless. I'm having a, a good time with this defensive war. And I think I might be able to snag Muscovy as an ally after my war's end. But in any case, shall we end the episode there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Holy sounds crap, good. We actually got one in the bag. After <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the episode, yay! <laughs> especially since this is the first episode of a new series, it's uh, it really means a lot. If you would like the episode, if you enjoyed it, no matter who's you're watching, I'm sure they would appreciate it. And of course, uh, subscribe to see more in the future as well. There will be new episodes every day, barring any technical issues that are out of our hands. But it's looking pretty good so far. But in any case, yes, your support is very much appreciated. Check out other perspectives, which will be linked in the video description below. And of course, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Just